we can begin to make a difference slowly. Have um, an await because we need a wait to be able to give them the anesthesia. And every drug is dosed by weight, so we have to have a fairly accurate weight to keep safe um, dosages. Yeah. Working with animals and the owners of those animals to get information about the animal's health, and that includes um, you know, weight and sex and general health in terms of are they covered with lots of ticks and fleas, what is their heart rate, and recording that information so that we can give the right dosage of anesthesia. And then if there's any unusual information, for example, if we think an animal is pregnant or if it has uh, unusual um, you know, bite wounds or uh, a damn, an injured limb, I make note of that on the intake paper so that the physician, so that the doctors are aware of that. Since I had Kim as a professor for anatomy and physiology and she mentioned that she goes to Mexico to spay and neuter cats and dogs, I knew right away that that's something I wanted to do. My mom is from El Salvador, a third world country, and I seen lots of starving, ill taken care of, abused dogs and cats and I've always wanted to come back and, and help in any way that I can. In case of an emergency, we need to give it drugs. We'll get the arm ready to put a catheter right into the IV vein. We're going to lube the eyes so that they don't dry out while cats under anesthesia. They're all like that. They were working and then it yeah, I will be doing prep. So I will be clipping and scrubbing and placing IV catheters and intubating. And how do you feel about doing this for your first time? I'm excited. I'm very excited. Yeah, I can't wait. I believe that spay and neutering clinics in Mexico are extremely important because what we're trying to do is not only sterilize these pets so that they don't become overpopulated, and keep having babies, and they keep having babies. Um, we're also educating the people and some of the owners of how to take care of animals, that they are animals that feel pain and they do love to be cared for, and that taking care of them helps take care of yourself as well. Um, and we're teaching people, you know, that that dogs are really adorable. Well, I do anything that, uh, that I can, basically anywhere I can pitch in, so that means anything from finding materials that they might need to set up the makeshift surgery rooms, um, to helping with recovery when the animals are starting to come out of anesthesia. These, these heat conditions down here, do you know that? Very difficult working with all this heat? <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a challenge. It's one of the challenges working in Mexico, that's for sure, especially in a lot of the areas we may not have, well, usually don't have air conditioning. We are lucky in one facility we did have air conditioning, and the others we just have usually fans, which are a mixed blessing because they keep the air moving, but they also move around any dust or debris that happens to be in the area that <laughs> we don't necessarily want in our surgery sites. Dora fell off the operating room. You're okay. Having coming, come the three years you've come on the heat down here, uh, how do you manage to, to keep up the pace that is necessary for this intensive clinic for 40 years? Um, well, the first year, <laughs> the first year I uh, fainted in a bathroom where I was spaying a group of kittens. <laughs> So I learned from that. Um, they always push a lot of fluids and because it's only a four-day cycle, you know that you were going to work very hard for two days. One of the things we learned early on was that we could keep going better if we had a break in between. So we'll work for two days, take a day break, work for two more days. And that helps a lot. But it's it's a different kind of pace because it's not like you see at home. There's always something that goes wrong or has to be done differently and so it's so different all the time and the people always enter into it. So much of the time we're working with a crowd of people around that are fascinated by what you're doing for the animal or kids that are fascinated and they get the opportunity to see it and, and understand what you're doing for the animal. 
It just, the days don't seem so long. You drink a lot of water, you sweat. I don't know. <laughs> Many of the animals that we work on have a blood-borne parasite called Ehrlichia. And um, the first time you do surgery on a dog with Ehrlichia and you see they have wine-colored blood that's very thin, that worries you because you wonder that maybe they're, that they're not going to recover as well from the surgery. Or and what was that needle for? Meloxicam. Which is? Which is for um, inflammation. This is a handsome little fellow. Hotel at donated to us. Um, a group um, out of Seattle, she's also a 501c3, her name is um, Missy Young and her organization is Animal Talk. Um, she, she collects collars all year long for us and then donates them to us. To make a feather bed. There's, there's a real need for uh, animal control down here. Um, if you, people come to Mexico and complain about all the dogs, street dogs and cats. And the people here love their animals. They all own the animals, but they're allowed to roam free. Um, and they just can't afford the medical, uh, the veterinarian services. And so our clinic provides, our project provides that service for free um, and uh, helps them to to control their animals at the present time, they have no really good way of doing it. We also um, show them that there's, by showing our compassion for the animals, we have changed their attitudes uh, towards their animals. And we've seen a, a, a great improvement uh, for the towns that we've gone to, how they treat their animals, um, how they uh, put them on leashes and walk them around, or even the feeding. Uh, some of the animals have actually gotten better care from that, so there's we're retraining them, I suppose, on how to treat their animals. And uh, you feel that it's necessary, the continuing of this clinic? Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's just two things that you can change the world, talking about the overpopulation in dogs and cats. That's number one, is pay and neuter, and number two, that I think is more important, is just education. So if you don't educate child, if you don't go to the schools, tingle about the animal's rights, about how to take care of a dog, a cat, things like that, you're going to change the next uh, generations and that's going to be key and plus spay and neuter the actual population. Uh, do you feel dogs and cats generally are mistreated here? Or? Well, yeah, um, every time is getting and every year is getting better, I mean about the culture. Uh, we have a lot of TV shows, uh, we watch a lot of uh, TV shows from the States, Animal Planet. So even people that it goes to our hospital, they don't believe they have cancer. We do bone surgeries, uh, we do MRI, things like that. I mean, and, but each time, by little by little, it's getting better, the culture about the animal care and about uh, how to help the animals to avoid them. My name is Morelia Montes. When did you start this refuge? When did you start this refuge and when did you start it? It started when I came to Holbox. There was no one who attended the animals. Now I have 60 animals. 60 animals. 60 animals. Yes. There are 40 cats. 
dos ma tres mapaches, Three raccoons. Eh, tres, cuatro pelícanos, o llegó uno, Five pelicans. un conchimay, que es el pájaro negro que está allá, okay. y un pequeño pajarito que está allí, a una golondrina marina. A little chicken, that is, I don't know the name in, in English. Siete, ocho, nueve perros, nueve dogs. Nine dogs. Ajá. Uh -huh. Y... Sí. No. Um, so much of our work we can do simply because Morelia goes ahead of us and speaks for us. There have been other spay-neuter campaigns down here that haven't been as successful for a variety of different reasons, but because she's involved and she stays all through the year, she plans on where we're going and, and talks to the people about how important it is. And then after we're gone, she looks at any complications that come up. It's our third year, and we've done more animals, uh, spayed and sterilized more animals this clinic than we did in the previous two clinics total. And so 